neurogenic neurogenic shock what is neurogenic shock डिफाइन करना तो अभी में नहीं आ रहा नो नो जस्ट एक्सप्लेन व्हाट इज न्यूरोजेनिक शॉक जस्ट ट्राई टू रिकॉल व्हाट इज बेसिकली बेसिकली व्हेन देयर इज फॉर एग्जांपल वी हैव अ स्पाइन कॉर्ड ट्रांजेक्शन एंड द लॉस ऑफ सिंपैथेटिक टोन विल कॉज दैट इज दैट इज दैट इज द दैट इज द थिंग बिकॉज़ व्हेन द व्हेन वी वर डिस्कसिंग इट आई एक्चुअली आई रॉंगली एक्सप्लेन न्यूरोजेनिक पल्मोनरी एडिमा बिकॉज़ आई जस्ट like uh, maybe i got distracted by something so whosoever listen to it uh, just correct yourself it was neurogenic pulmonary edema which i explained that after head injury there is sympathetic discharge and there is development of pulmonary edema as result of head injury so that is neurogenic pulmonary edema so nobody corrected me at that time i don't know uh, that's why i i want everyone because you see the thing is that um i don't prepare or i just don't do any formal lectures okay because otherwise it will not be possible for me uh, to to spare time daily because a, a, a formal presentation needs a lot more energy than what uh, i just discuss and actually uh, in my opinion uh, that way of learning is very effective if you have a little bit of baseline knowledge and if you counter question like i would i would be very happy if someone would be correcting me at that time but nobody corrected me so if uh, in discussion if if no, anyone doesn't uh, agree to what we are discussing please raise the hand and uh, it's better it will be better for everyone okay because uh, the the process of learning continues all the time okay so we uh, we just started uh, learning about shock okay so uh we will be discussing we will continue our discussion about shock so if we just uh, consider some other types of shock because mainly we will discuss septic shock today okay just to uh, uh, just re recap we discuss about uh, hypo uh, uh, hypovolemic shock and mainly uh, the the type of hypovolemic shock we discuss was uh, hemorrhagic shock okay so there are some other type uh, other uh, uh, varieties which may which may be there in the same category okay because uh, the relative the the, th the thing is relative hypovolemia okay so actually the redistributive shock and hypovolemic shock uh, uh, there are certain things which are common because because of any reason there is decrease in effective circulatory volume so what other types will be other than hemorrhagic shock will be having the same effect like uh, hypovolemic shock am, uh, am i clear in my question i will repeat that what other types of shock in which there is decrease in relative uh, uh, so effective circulatory volume so anyone wants to speak out septic shock uh, is distributive shock assalam alaikum septic shock no no just a second just a second just a second in septic shock athletic no 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 in septic shock there is not redistribution or relative hypovolemia no i mean vasodilatation vasodilatation where as a result of anaphylactic anaphylactic okay one of them is anaphylactic what else this neurogenic shock which i you know, which you were telling okay in which also where there is vasodilatation and what else which is result of that thing actually it's something else it's acute like uh, acute dehydration okay because of any loss gi loss burns okay so it will also result in hypo hypovolemia okay effective circulatory volume is decreased one of the cause is hemorrhagic other is any loss from uh, like either in the form of vomiting diarrhea it will also result in the almost the, the similar 
picture with different uh, a little of course difference in management and uh, categories but uh, the picture is like that okay what about uh, enough it's a few words about anaphylactic shock before we go to septic shock uh, how to deal with anaphylactic shock how we may I? who wants to answer may i answer yes yes please uh, go ahead in anaphylactic shock firstly we will uh, we will go with airway breathing and circulation okay we will give 100% oxygen to the patient mm -hmm. assess for the breathing or if he if or she requires assisted breathing then we will we we, we will give ventilation or circulation okay. we will see these patients are basically vasodilated so we will give a lot of fluids to them if, and uh, also we will we will we will give adrenaline for anaphylactic shock or inotropes if required okay we will give we will we will give corticosteroids like hydrocortisone okay you are missing one very and, important point and then when i will point out try to think you are missing one very very important one like uh, not one more than one very important point you are telling right you are carrying abs uh, telling absolutely correctly but you are missing a very important point it is anaphylactic shock so would you like to do something else than what you have told up till now uh, we will send Stop we will collect the, the blood, blood blood samples and send it for master triptase labels no up till now you have not told that thing if you are if you are suspecting anaphylactic shock you have to stop the possible triggering agent yeah yes in the oral part uh, i know that it is understood but examiner mm -hmm. wants to listen from you okay and when you are explaining then we'll... any any emergency any emergency uh, you have to say that the your, your answer should be immediately call for help okay in my approach is airway breathing circulation i will like you remember the word stop okay stop maybe okay. maybe in in any anything like malignant hyperthermia you have to stop the triggering agent in anything in which there is vagal response you have to stop the surgeon so remember the word stop if you are suspecting high spinal or total okay. spinal or uh, uh, last you will stop the epidural if you are suspecting anaphylaxis from bl blood you will stop the blood you are if you are giving some antibiotic and because what is the most common uh, commonest agent for anaphylaxis antibiotics antibiotics okay. uh, is it antibiotics or muscle relaxant muscle relaxant muscle relaxant prostamine drugs okay so among the muscle relaxant what is the most culprit one Tracheurium. No, Zishan, correct your knowledge. Exo. I'm not expecting this answer from you. This is not correct answer. Tracheurium is uh, associated with histamine release, but the drug which is the most culprit for anaphylaxis is rocuronium and saxamethonium. Okay, severe anaphylaxis is rare with tracheurium. Okay. Okay. Uh, and Very actually, there is there is a NAP NAP guideline NAP uh, for something I, I don't I cannot recall because this is not our topic. But I'm read about NAP NAP six. I think it is for on on anaphylaxis. National audit project. Yes, national audit project. I think NAP six is for on anaphylaxis. And when you are appearing in any British or uh, European exam, uh, they they are expecting you to whatever causes you are telling. you have to tell according to the data which is or re recommendation or the findings from that thing okay that is preferable so atracurium is associated with histamine release but it is rarely associated with anaphylaxis as compared to other because anaphylaxis can occur uh, in uh, by any medication okay but if you are specifically discussing among the muscle relaxant it is rocuronium and saxamethonium and antibiotics are one of the sources okay and one what else under anesthesia zishan 
what other cause other than these two what i have told you when they are asking you you have to tell these th three things what is the third one so latex allergy latex allergy okay so latex mediated uh, anaphylaxis is one of them which you have to mention whenever you are uh, telling okay uh, I will just Bisma. You were uh, you you had raised the hand. I couldn't give you the, the chance. Please, uh, what you want to speak out? Please tell. Bisma Jabi. Yes. Sir, actually, I was a stop the offending agent. I was a stop the mic on. I was a stop the mic on. Okay, try to speak out in English, please. We are having international uh, participants, so we have to communicate in English. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank please you. Carry so, on. Yes. Uh, okay, so uh, now we will continue. Uh, and uh, uh, like uh, now we will come to septic shock. Okay? So uh, the rest of the part is cardiogenic and obstructive. We will discuss uh, in, in our next discussion. So anaphylactic shock, mainly there is vasodilatation and uh, effective circulatory volume is lost. So in addition to airway breathing circulation, stopping the uh, possible agent, you will be going towards the uh, management according to the uh, large, this large bore IV cannulas, fluids, steroids, sending the sample for triptase level, documenting it, and uh, supportive treatment, uh, epinephrine, uh, intramuscular or IV, and then followed by infusion, okay? So that is the protocol for uh, this. And because uh, in, in the same picture, you might have uh, bronchospasm, so you, you might need to give some bronchodilators, you might need to give antihistaminics, okay? So that will be the total part of it because actually, you know, uh, discussing this topic is a little difficult. I'm trying to give you a concept because in, in the topic of anaphylaxis, they may be asking you what is the difference between anaphylactic and anaphylactoid reaction. There are some other questions we will discuss uh, later on in our later discussion. Okay, so what is septic shock? Who will take the lead? What is septic so it shock? Is one is explanation and one is a pet definition of septic shock. So if we explain okay. it in simpler words, it is sepsis induced hypotension, hypotension despite adequate fluid resuscitation, okay. uh, which requires vasopressors to maintain MAP above 65 millimeter of mercury. Okay, absolutely perfect. So practically, practically speaking, uh, there will be some, uh, some picture of... Uh, uh, like, um, uh, because we will not be discussing in detail sepsis, but we will just try to focus on the main aspects of septic shock and its uh, management. So uh, what factor will be defi uh, defining you towards septic shock? There will be some focus of sepsis and uh, you will be uh, quantifying it or uh, according to QSOFA or you know better, uh, you know very well now. So SIRS. So what is SIRS score? SIRS, uh, it has four components, temperature, heart rate, respiratory rate, and WBC count. Mm -hmm. Temperature should be above 38 or below 36, heart rate more than 90. Mm -hmm. uh, respiratory rate, tachypneic, like more than 20, I think 20. And white cell count is uh, more than 12,000. Okay, so actually, um, if two or more of present, then we say this SIRS is positive and uh, the patient has sepsis. Okay, so what will you be doing at that time? Like, what will be your approach? Because so if approach you have is... a patient, if you have a patient which is uh, heading towards uh, this, this one, uh, like uh, there are some, uh, you can follow any score, by the way. Okay, it may be SIRS score. It may be Q so far. Okay. Uh, you can follow anyway because so the surviving sepsis 2021 guidelines said that no one score should be uh, followed. There should be at least two or three scores. Uh, you, we should include SIRS, Q so far, and MUSE or news any uh, others. But Q so far alone is no, now not recommended. Actually, Q so far, I tell you something. Q so far is, by the way, what is Q so far? 
suffice quick sequential organ failure assessment. Uh, it has three components. Uh, there is uh, um, HAD uh, uh, hypotension, right? Okay. Um, tachypnea and a second Altered mental status. Altered. Altered mentation. Yes. Okay. So, uh, what is difference between uh, uh, actually Q sofa and sofa? So far, it's a lengthy score which involves six systems. Actually, it involves um, some labs. Okay. So, the, ba the basic up. principle which is uh, being uh, used in when you are using Q so far is that you are not <coughs> delaying if you have any patient with, with low blood pressure, altered mental status. You, there is no investigation, am I right? And there is suspected yes, in a patient with, the, with the, some involvement of uh, some infection. Okay. So uh, you are starting your management towards the sep sepsis uh, guidelines, okay? So uh, according to the, the, because the first thing, because later on, um, uh, there will be a lot of uh, things other than what is there in the early bundles, okay? So people are afraid, uh, are confused about one hour bundle and three hour bundle or six hour bundle, believe me, the, it is one and the same thing. What is the basic principle? Basic principle is to identify the patient, okay? Who is having this suspected sepsis. This is number one. Whatever bundle you are following, the base thing will be the same, number one. N number two, you have to send the culture and start antibiotic. You have yes. to start fluid resuscitation. You have to do the lactate levels. Whatever bundle it is there, it is the same thing. If you, you see, then there will be, people are confused. People are asking me in some messages, some, some of them ask me that it is one hour bundle we have to follow or three hour bundle. You will see the same thing, okay? By your lactate levels, obtain blood cultures, administer blood, uh, broad spectrum antibiotics, rapid in, uh, in administration of 30 ml per kg. But it's okay. mostly the one hour bundle only that the, the only difference that the surviving sepsis 2021 guideline changed was the uh, uh, time time period of fluid resuscitation from one hour to three hours that the fluid 30 ml per kg should be given within three hours uh, earlier in the one hour bundle it was that it should be given within the first hour so Actually, other than that so all the things are the same as one hour bundle practical conduct is that if you 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 just know because now we will focus on the septic shock management so just tell me one thing how you administer the fluid do you start 30 ml per kg is a big amount so uh, in uh, would you like to give because not isolated patient will be there with the isolated thing there will be some there will be some comorbidities okay in majority of the patients and then another thing is that when you are managing the patient or, or you are answering the patient, can you mute, please? Try to mute yourself. Okay, so when you are answering the question, yes, you have to explain or you have to highlight the bundles, but you have to tell that patient management is according to the clinical parameters you are following. Okay, like it is not written in one hour bundle ABC. Would you, would you not like to tell about it when you start the... the your answer, you have to tell that if you have a patient with septic shock, I will, uh, my approach will be airway breathing circulation. Okay. And yes. then you will be telling these things. And yes, you will, and then you will yes. be saying that I will pass the Foley's catheter and I will monitor the fluid status. And uh, uh, we will be, I will be looking into the, whether the patient is going in overload. Okay. Yes. At the same time, you have, you, to, you will tell that I will send the blood samples for blood cultures, I will start the empirical uh, therapy. I will do the baseline lactate levels, and then I will start the fluid resuscitation. I will set the yes, parameters. Sir. This fluid resuscitation is sir, just a starting point. Then we have to tailor our fluid uh, according uh, to the fluid clinical response. According to the according yes, to sir. the uh, according to the clinical response, and the same thing which we have discussed number of times now in our recent days that you will be doing the straight leg raising test, or you will be doing the uh, focused echo. Okay, you will be looking at the whether the lungs are uh, going wet or not. 
okay and then you are uh, what else what, there, is, there is one more thing which is not written here but you have to follow it in septic shock or uh, management of sepsis what is that one stroke volume variation mm, or stroke volume variation is the fluid responsiveness but there is one thing which is not written here but you have mm -hmm. to tell what is that one capillary refill time uh, okay these are clean clinical you can uh, you can count it in clinical parameters okay there is one thing with there is one test or one uh, investigation or whatever you say which we have which we, which we usually follow what is that one so you not... no abg anyone please like tissue compatibility in eco uh, that we i have told you that is for uh, that is for the dynamic parameters of fluid uh, resuscitation urine output clinical parameters capillary refill time straight leg drain test vena cable compressibility uh, signs of overload okay generalized uh, uh, this uh, one lactate, uh, level. lactate level is written here there is one thing which is not written here leukocyte count tlc no stop to fluid uh, doctor uh, anyone please i am i will i am very disappointed if you are not able to tell it cvp glucocorticoid administration steroids no no this is after uh, uh, the, the steroids come after fluid after uh, uh, maybe the carbonate base base axis base axis i mean ebg and uh, no anion gab no when i will no? tell you you all will be will be disappointed that why we didn't answer this thing just x ray that's no. right mixed venous oxygen saturation and central Thank venous you. oxygen Al saturation uh, ah, there is okay. a, there is the electra yes, yes. electra for aditya okay because mixed venous oxygen saturation we are following and we have to monitor the mixed venous oxygen saturation what is the yeah. concept of mixed uh, aditya would you like to explain some words about mixed venous oxygen saturation what is difference between mixed venous oxygen saturation and central venous oxygen saturation this is number 1 why we follow it in which condition it will be increased or decreased it will be decreased in septic shock sepsis in all phases of septic shock actually i don't remember of, uh, just a second just to be very simple what is difference between mixed venous oxygen saturation and central venous oxygen saturation central venous oxygen saturation we will get it uh, by blood from central veins what about mixed venous by the i think by the pa catheter pulmonary oh, artery okay okay you are uh, you uh, you have uh, tell, told the uh, the source but what is the difference uh, anyone wants to answer please raise the hand Yes, Zishan, would you like to tell? Sir, when the cardiac output is uh, not adequate, uh, the mixed no, venous no. oxygen. We are having the first question. High. Try to answer the first part of question. What is difference between mixed venous oxygen saturation and central venous oxygen saturation? Aditya has told that it is being taken from the. A pulmonary artery catheter. Fine. What is difference? Why you are uh, interested in when in getting this thing? Why you are not uh, relying only on uh, this one uh, uh, central venous? Because central venous is easier to take. But why you say that it is more reliable? There is mixing of blood in the mixed venous saturation. Yes. Very good. Mixing of what? oxygenated and deoxygenated arterial and venous blood no no it's not that one uh, the upper upper part of body venous drainage is from coming from the uh, central venous or uh, this one jugular okay just tell me one thing what is difference in extraction of the upper half of the body and the lower half of the body is there any difference the uh, extraction in upper half more of the body the is, upper. is more okay so the the central venous oxygen saturation is slightly lower so if you want to 
have the accurate one you want it to be mixed with the one coming from the inferior vena cava so if you are withdrawing it from later on when their mixing has already been occurred that will be reli the reliable one okay that is the the concept of mixed venous oxygen saturation understand no sir uh, can you please repeat the last part uh, you see the the uh, the venous return coming from inferior vena cava mm -hmm. has more more fraction of oxygen in it right so okay. for example if it is coming from central venous is uh, for example 70% so it may be 80% for example i'm just giving you a number so right. when it is combined that's why you are taking it from late from some distal part right. where they, they, this blood is mixed right sir so it should be taken like, like the blood from the right atrium is the one that is ideal for mixed venous oxygen saturation oh no mixed venous oxygen saturation is taken from pulmonary pulmonary uh, artery pulmonary artery right where we we take it from uh, this uh, pulmonary uh, pulmonary artery catheter okay right but recently uh, uh, because uh, pulmonary artery catheter used to be uh, a parameter which was defining the management okay but they have even removed it from the management guidelines of ARDS and actually as as uh, the development of ultrasound and echo uh, they are not uh, doing it now because the information they are get uh, taking for from uh, pulmonary artery catheter before they are getting it from echo they are getting it from t they are getting it from uh, in the form of ultrasound so they are not relying on it even in the diagnosis of ARDS there used to be before the presence of uh, like uh, ex uh, exclusion of uh, cardiac failure okay on the with pulmonary artery catheter findings but now they have re many years ago they have removed that thing as well so uh, in the, in the practical purposes uh, we are also uh, following the uh, this one uh, uh, central venous oxygen saturation okay so mixed venous saturation is lower than central venous saturation or exactly okay. mixed venous no no mixed venous saturation will be higher than central venous because the oxygen which is coming uh, from the lower half of the body has more oxygen as compared to the one coming from the um, uh, central vein right got it okay got it uh, so th uh, that is thing then um uh, so we are following i will just show, show you just a second please i just uh, downloaded some of the slides to just explain to you this uh, is there any relationship between cardiac output and mixed uh, this one uh, value of mixed oxygen venous uh, mixed oxygen uh, mixed venous oxygen saturation Yes, sir. Like you, the lesser the cardiac output, the more the mixed venous oxygen saturation. Uh, but you see, uh, for example, this is uh, mixed venous oxygen saturation. Okay, when there is oxygen consumption is more, as occurs in stress, pain. So how there are actually uh, there are certain phase in sepsis. Okay, initially when there is hyperdynamic phase, do you know the the cardiac output is more? Am I right? Systemic vascular yes. resistance is very low. Actually. Perfusion is too much, and that time uh, miss mix minus oxygen saturation will be low. Okay, but as as we are approaching the the category of septic shock, in which actually the perfusion is now uh, decreasing. Okay, and uh, the the this one uh, uh, body is un the tissues are unable to utilize oxygen. In that phase, actually, actually, mixed venous oxygen saturation will start to increase, okay? Because body is not able to utilize the oxygen, and now there is anaerobic metabolism. Right. Am I right? That's why lactate levels are getting high. So whenever, for even practical purposes, when you are managing a patient with sepsis and septic shock, you have to correlate 
cardiac output, uh, stage of shock, the, like for example, whether it is now uh, cardiac output is heading towards going down or you, though now the patient is in decompensated phase. Okay. So that will define, define uh, the state of the patient. You understand? So mixed venous oxygen saturation is actually decreased in, uh, in sepsis. And in the early phase, you have to actually increase the cardiac output. Uh, sorry, you have to uh, support the, the uh, like you are supporting the circulation and uh, the cardiac output is actually in increased in the initial stage, high cardiac output. But later on, when the patient is decompensated, and now there is too much uh, cytokine cytokine load, and there is like uh, there is a more of anaerobic metabolism. Okay, oxygen is not able to be utilized. This picture of similar picture which occurs in cyanide poisoning, that picture is occurring. In that case, now mixed venous oxygen saturation will start to increase. Actually, okay. Any doubt? Sir, it's clear. Mm, there were some other slides. You see, just a second. It's the same thing. Cardiac output high, mixed vena do you them or low? If it is high, you will see SVO two. This uh, uh, mixed venous oxygen. If it is high, it is the the uh, the this one phase when you are using excessive vasoactives. Okay, in that in in that pa pa patient maybe. And, and the patient is decompensating towards go, going towards decompensation in, in that condition, SVO2 will be increased. Okay. And if it is low, like it is patient tissue is extracting more as in occurring in anemia or hypoxia or high VO2 when the ox tissues are using oxygen more. Okay. And if his cardiac output is low, then you will see that I, I was telling you. If it is uh, low, it is low, car, low, low output uh, as in heart failure. Okay. Okay. So we will just go back to from where we started that we have a patient in, in sepsis. So you will be following the bundles and you will be starting the fluid resuscitation. Then we said about that we will take the uh, cultures. We will start the antibiotic. We will try to remove the source uh, of infection. Uh, th th this is actually details of sepsis uh, surviving sepsis campaign, but usually the picture is the same. Even if you are managing septic shock, you have to keep in consideration these things. Okay. So what about vasopressors? What will be the uh, first vasopressor of choice? If you are Norad noradrenaline. Okay. What is the reason for it? Uh, sir, it is a. Systemic vascular resistance is low in. is, is high in sepsis. Uh, yes, uh, norepinephrine has predominant alpha effects, okay? And it is potent. So you will be starting norepinephrine, okay? So when you are starting norepinephrine, there, uh, are there any precautions would you like to do for norepinephrine? Would you like to have central line? So it is usually, yes, sir. It is usually, uh, it's better to be started with central line. Yes. Or it is also said that you can start with the peripheral line, but uh, in due time, you should uh, put a central line and then continue uh, it with the central line. Yes, it is better to. And then uh, whenever you are starting uh, this one, you will try to uh, correct other, other things as well. Like, for example, if... Uh, any source, as we have told, then uh, because uh, if there is too much acidosis, it will also make the uh, vasopressor inactive. You will just try to, because it's a vicious cycle, okay? More, uh, if even if you are starting uh, the vasopressors, even it, it, it can increase acidosis itself by decreasing the, uh, it, it like it, you see, it, it is itself causing ischemia if you are using vasopressor in a high dose. But, Actually, you just have to try to correct other things. Then you are giving the fluids. What else? You give the fluid. Uh, you... Then there comes the one which Aditya was to, to, telling. That was uh, uh, steroids. Okay. 
so when uh, when do you start steroids in these patients steroids uh, are given in, uh, in the case when the hypertension is resistant to inotropes yes and we suspect as hp uh, hp axis suppression Mm, suppression is it mandatory? I don't think so. No, but it will also decrease the inflammatory mediators. Yes, uh, yes. And, and it, it, it increases the responsiveness of the uh, blood vessels to inotropes and decreases the capillary leaks. Okay, okay. so how much would, would you like to give? 200 mg per day, we can give 50 mg QID. Uh, 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 would you like to give hydrocortisone or uh, methylprednisolone? Uh, hydrocortisone. Hydrocortisone. Hydrocortisone is uh, is a mineralocorticoid or like uh, how how you quantify about its mineralocorticoid and uh, glucocorticoid activity. It has more mineralocorticoid activity. And fluidry, this one, uh, methylprednisolone? Uh, compared to hydrocortisone, it has very less. So in this scenario, you want both activities or you need more mineralocorticoid activity? Yes. Uh, whatever concept I have that I think in this scenario, it needs more of mineralocorticoid activity. Okay. Sir. Sure. So, um, Sir, before uh, starting the uh, steroids, we do have more options for vasopressors. After NORAD, uh, we have to add vasopressin. And uh, if NORAD and vasopressin are still not working, then we can add epinephrine and phen also. Yes. Yes, uh, you're right. After that, vasopressin or uh, epinephrine. And then, when one more point is that now, if you see that cardiac output is low, then you have to add dobutamine as well. Dobutamine as well. Dobutamine as well. Okay. And then you are following the lactate levels. And there are some other uh, markers they are giving, like uh, for lactate, uh, they also give thiamine. Okay. So these are uh, in uh, extra things. Okay. And uh, in, similarly, is there anything we you like? For, to... I... Yeah, we will go for invasive arterial BP monitoring. Yes. Uh, actually, we missed it. We we should have labeled this uh, cardiac output monitor and uh, arterial blood pressure monitoring even before. We missed it, actually. Thanks for correcting. What else? Anything else? There is one very important thing which you have not labeled up till now, which is actually uh, part of management of septic shock in the sense that if it is there, you have to correct it. That is anemia, okay? Because uh, it is actually in any any part, any sort of shock, whether the pathology is whatever is the pathology, whatever is the cause, the end result is that you have to maintain the oxygen content, okay? So for maintenance of oxygen content, the uh, uh, main thing is uh, uh, hemoglobin concentration, okay? Because uh, dissolved oxygen is uh, in minor quantity. The main content of oxygen rely on the hemoglobin content. Okay. So because if there is low content, even if cardiac output is, uh, you are trying to maintain, uh, the result will be anaerobic. Okay. Because oxygen delivery will depend on two things. Oxygen delivery depend on oxygen content and cardiac output. Okay. okay. That's how, that's how we calculate it. So whenever you are telling, you have to uh, uh, use this uh, word as well. Okay. So what else would you like to do? Electrolytes. Mm, and, okay. Uh, do we have to balance ABC? Yes, Zishan, what are you saying? Sir, are we supposed to answer what sort of antibiotics should would be used? 
yes if you are dealing because actually uh, at the moment i was just focusing on the component of uh, septic shock uh, empirical therapy okay according to the possible organism that should be your answer okay broad spectrum uh, antibiotic if you are suspecting any specific thing then you can tell that it is for mrsa or whatever i am not very good in uh, antibiotics because i am not doing icu for a long time but vre or uh, like mrsa you just you should be knowing that if it is this, uh, more of uh, gram positive you you can focus on the uh, uh, first generation or penicillin okay and if it is more of uh, gram negative you can go towards uh, cephalosporins okay and you can go higher up with the meropenem like things like that and if you have penicillin sensitivity you can go for mancomycin okay so uh, for anaerobic cover coverage you can add metronidazole so you have to go, go do the empirical therapy and you have to send the blood cultures as well as if there is any other source that may be urine culture that may be endotracheal uh, tube culture uh, sorry secretions of endotracheal or uh, uh, like like we do in web okay so the the management will be uh, dictated accordingly okay right nice. so any point uh, left in this uh, part sub septic shock anything which is being missed so we will discuss yeah, the no. card sorry ventilation strategies and all those things the uh, adjuncts adjunctive treatments yes we will uh, discuss separately okay so um any any question from septic shock component In esteroid, we will use hydrocortisone or hydrocortisone. Hydrocortisone. It is. Hydrocortisone. I, I was just because uh, as uh, it is mentioned, hydrocortisone. I was just forgetting the relative mineralocorticoid and uh, glucocorticoid activity. But if you are talking about the maintenance of blood pressure, the main component of steroid which will be required is will be mineralocorticoid. Okay. And as anti-inflammatory, that will be the glucocorticoids activity, yeah, sir. Okay. So I think hydrocortisone has both of them. Yes, sir. It is written in the Surviving Steps Campaign 2021 guideline also. Hydrocortisone is mentioned. Yes. 100 milligram per day. And you can give in boluses and you can give in infusion as well. You have to give 200 uh, milligram in 24 hours in whatever regime you want. Okay. Yes. Even you can give an infusion. Okay. Sir. So, inshallah, we will uh, discuss uh, obstructive shock and uh, cardiogenic shock in our later discussion. Okay. So, thanks a lot, all of you. And probably, uh, probably we will uh, do a class because tomorrow I have off. So, maybe tomorrow we will do at 3 uh, 3 p.m. Pakistan time, 3.30 Indian time. Okay. Thanks a lot. Any questions? Anyone want to ask any question? Uh, they can drop the message on uh, WhatsApp. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.